When you get born again, your spirit is recreated. It is made alive, right? That is a done deal. My spirit is recreated. It is made alive. But the Bible says in Romans 12 verse 2 about our soul. Listen to what it says. It's got to skip ahead there. Do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. Whose job is it to renew our minds? Who has to make the action? We do. When we asked Jesus to come into our hearts, he came and renewed our spirits, right? But the renewing of our mind is left to us to take some actions. Does the Holy Spirit help? Of course he does. He's involved in everything. He'll help you make a milkshake if you want, right? Of course he's involved to help you renew your mind. But we have to make the decisions. So many of us have accepted that this is normal life. Who knows what I'm talking about? This is what I live in a fallen world, and we do, right? But you're telling me that heaven inside of you can't impact where we are living, right? So you've accepted, okay? Depression, 73.2% of people have depression, so this is a normal thing. I do not see depression in Jesus, so I say, if he said I must be like him, then I've got to tell you that I do not have to have depression in me. Mind, right? Emotions and will. All of these things is our soul. So if we can renew our soul, tell me, would we be thinking differently? Would we be feeling differently? Right? Do you see that? Mind, will, emotions. Would I be going after God with everything I have? Where is all our struggle if the soul is the mind, will, and the emotions? It's in the soul. We are having the, 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 the problem in the soul. We are not having it in the spirit. Do you see that? Our spirit has been recreated. Our spirit is what connects us to God. But then it comes down, right? Now, now, in Romans 12 verse 2, it says that if you do not renew your mind, you will not know what God's will for your life is. Do you see that? I have seen people who have, who have made the decision to follow God. And they will get to heaven one day. I'm confident of that. But they'll get to heaven not having experienced heaven on earth one bit. So it is possible to be saved and not experience anything that God has outside of salvation. So that would mean that the limiting factor in us is not our spirit but our, our soul. Our ability to renew the soul. I'll give you an example. I love God, but I do not believe that he is the healer. All right? I believe that's done, that's finished. I will go to heaven early. Okay? But because I was not willing to renew my mind, to renew my soul by the washing of the word, by whatever it might be, to be teachable, things like that, I will not experience the rest of what he had for me here. I will not experience the manifestation of the blessing of heaven here on earth. Does that impact our, 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 our world massively? Think about our lives. Think about our lives. I've, I've shared this story with you before, but when I was in primary school, my, my mathematic marks were so bad that in high school they put me in a dumb class. And for good reason, right? By the world standards, I was not so bright, a dim light. But I had a mother at home who would constantly feed my soul. You are the head and not the tail. You have the mind of Christ. You are above and not. All the time, she would be feeding my soul, feeding my soul, feeding my soul, telling me about Daniel, how nobody could keep Daniel down, telling me about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abed. Nobody could keep them. Joseph, David, all of these men who had a purpose that nobody could keep them down because they were called by God. By the time I got to university, I was programming robots on paper. And let me tell you about the mathematics involved in programming a robot. I want to show you that my insufficiency in the natural was overwhelmed by my abundant supply in the soul. That is huge. That is huge. 
Your financial insufficiency, let's bring it to the dirty money, all right? Your financial insufficiency in, in, in the natural can be overwhelmed by the overflow in the spiritual, in your soul. Do you see that? That is the truth. Otherwise, where does the money come from when you tithe? Your soul is being renewed. What? You're reading that God says, I'll open up the, the windows of heaven. I'll open up the windows of heaven. I'll open up the windows of heaven. I'll open up the windows of heaven. That means I do not have to look here for my finances to come. It's going to come from the windows of heaven. Fantastic. Rain down $100 bills. Hey, why not? Don't limit God the way he can do it. If he can, if he can put money in a fish's mouth, he can do whatever he can. It, it can be the most incredible idea that he gives you. Right? But it's going to come out of what? It's going to come out of a prospering soul. My prospering soul, look here. As my soul prospers, what happens to the prosperity in my life? The, the blessing of heaven manifests. What happens to it? Can I stop it? Of course not. My, my soul starts to prosper some more. What happens to my relationships? What happens? They start to prosper. What happens to my relationship with God? It starts to prosper. If I come to God without all the worries that he doesn't truly love me, how is my relationship with him? It's fantastic. When Jesus blessed the food when he fed the 5,000, do you think he had any worry that there was not going to be enough food? He was fully confident that God was coming through. When last were we fully confident that God was coming through? Do you know how much worry you have when you are fully confident that God is coming through? You have zero. How incredible life would be to live without fear and worry. And that's not a pipe dream. I think that's the right saying in America. It's not a pipe dream. It is a reality and we see it all the time. Otherwise, why would Jesus say, fear not, don't worry, fear not, don't worry, fear not? Why? Because fear is like you're trying to, you're trying to see something, but you've got all this stuff in front of you. Have you ever had that? You're trying to see the, the, the thing on the stage, but there's a guy with a big fat head in front of you. That's what fear is. That's what fear does to our ability to hear God. Unless we renew our mind, we will never know what our purpose is. Do you know somebody who doesn't know what their purpose is on earth? Are you that somebody? <laughs> you know what it is? It's just the fact that we need to get our soul renewed. And you're praying, Lord, please, please, I want to hear your voice. I want to hear your voice. And, and then you're stressing over here. And then you're saying, Lord, please, what's wrong with you? I'm, I'm asking you. You're not coming. And then you 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 in turmoil over here. And then you say, please, Lord, just let me hear what I'm supposed to do. And he brings us back to Romans 2. Romans 12 verse 2 saying, renew your mind and then you will know what God's will is. Good, pleasing, and perfect will is for our lives. Starts with our soul. Remember that thermometer. As our soul is prospering, what is happening in our lives? Anyone here have some area in your life that is not prospering? Four of us. Five. It's good. Can you stop the thermometer from going up? In the sun. So as my soul gets hot, what happens to everything else in my life? It's going to increase. Have you ever played with a basketball or a tennis ball in the swimming pool? Right? We all have at some point. If you haven't, go to the ark and try. You can take that basketball all the way to the bottom of the pool and you can hold it down for five minutes if you can breathe that long. What happens when you let it go? It shoots up to the top. I'm telling you, when your soul is prospering, there is not a force on earth that can keep you down, that can keep any area in your life down from prospering. I'm talking relationships. I'm talking the, the, the peace in your heart. I'm talking everything. Nothing on earth can stop it. No economy, no president, not anything. If you don't believe me, read the stories of Daniel. Read the stories of Joseph. They put him in prison. Paul and Silas, they put them in the innermost prison and they couldn't stop them. Do you see that? 
When your soul is prospering, you will be like that basketball and you will float to the top when there is turmoil and everybody else is drowning. You will float to the top. Because there is a spiritual law here that says, as your soul prospers, everything else in your life will prosper. You can't fight it. You can't fight it. And, and if you don't believe me, just get your, pro, your soul prospering and you'll see it for yourself. This is why I could never be a motivational speaker. Because I'd have to say stuff that might not work. But this is why I love to preach God's word. Because it's like selling a product that is just unbelievable. Whatever I can say about God, he's even better than that. Whatever I can tell you he can do, he can do even more. Amen? Amen. You will recreate on the outside, in your external world, what you are experiencing on the inside. Ever met a negative, miserable person? How is their life? Stuff always going wrong. Always the most terrible things. You think, it's shame. What's wrong with that person? Why is this bad stuff always happening to them? And then you've got old Smiley Johnson over here, and good stuff's happening to him all the time. Do you see that? We all go through seasons, but you can identify some people always have the bad stuff happen to them. The person who says, oh, no, I'm going to get sick, what happens to them? But you know what? Long before they physically got sick, they believed they were sick on the inside. They believed it on the inside. And in Proverbs, what does it say? As a man thinks in his heart, so is he. I was so... Our, our, our little baby girl, and, and please, I don't say this in an arrogant way because as I've learned with children, you have zero say once they're born. <laughs> you know, when they're babies, they, they, you, they are what you get. But my wife believed that she was going to be a no-trouble baby. She spoke it. She believed it. She, she told everybody, and we have this little angel. That when we tell people how she sleeps at this age, they're like, what? That's incredible. It is incredible. But long before it became an external reality, my wife believed it on the inside. If you believe that you are the child of God, that you have the blessings of heaven, that you have unlimited potential, that you can accomplish anything through God's power, you know what? Your life is going to start looking like that. I know this is a simple message and you're saying, look, you know, I, really, I can stand up there and preach that sermon. Fantastic. Let's live it rather. Let's live it. Anyone here, if we renewed our minds and we started to prosper, anyone here who thinks their life is going to take 